Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 22 Goddess Lakshmi's Mantra Form Chakra O Goddess without beginning or end, omniscient and beloved of Hari, how are these mantras imparted and what are their forms? Are they of equal importance or is their significance of different grades? Asking thee this question, I salute thee, O Padma. Please tell me all this. Shri, O Pakashasana, listen attentively to what I tell you about my mantra form and how I reveal the mantras. The absolute Brahman, the ultimate Dhaman, resort of all, embodiment of the resplendent six divine attributes, unlimited by time or place, formless and unrivaled. That Brahman, the Aham, I am, itself, perfectly conscious of its own being, is devoid of the gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas, is beginningless and endless, and is the great celestial Lakshmi Narayan. Brahman is the essence of consciousness and bliss, divine, without defect, decay, or death. It is in the state of unmanifested existence where there is no polarization of subject and object. When this Brahman is motionless, I am that motionless state of its being. Then, once in a while, by virtue of differentiating between bhavat and bhava, being and the state of being, the Absolute Brahman manifests itself of its own free will without relinquishing or changing its form. I am the I-hood of the Supreme Atman, identical with its being, and should be worshipped as such. Of my own free will, I emanate from the radiant God who is pure being, supporting the entire assemblage of creation which I have voluntarily created, and after having created the matrika, sound and the alphabet, emanating from myself, I reveal my power during the six courses of creation. These six courses are known as the ways of Shabda, Kala, Tattva, Mantras, Pada, and Bhuvana, worldly existence. The Supreme I-hood, which is flawless consciousness, first shows signs of activity during the course of sound. O Pakashasana, I have already given you a detailed description of that journey. The most exalted manifestation of mind, infused with consciousness and power, undergoes a seeming transformation so as to undertake the course of creation as kalas, consisting of jnana, etc. The kalas, the attributes of the Supreme Atman, have been precisely explained to you earlier along with their number and characteristics. Together with the first two courses of Shabda and Kalas, that aspect of mind which consists of consciousness is revealed during the course of the Tattvas when I assume the forms of Vasudeva, etc. The Vyuhas and Vibhavas and all the other emanations of God are regarded as the seeming transformation of the Supreme Atman during the course of the Tattvas. That same aspect of myself revealed during the first two courses of creation, which is in essence consciousness, appears to undergo a lasting transformation during the most significant of all my courses of creation the mantras. During my highly exalted mantra course, when I am marked as consciousness, 
I assume the embodiments of Vasudev and the other related deities to guide the jivas drowning in the ocean of worldly existence across to safety. Also to provide objects of enjoyment for those who still are in the throes of worldly existence and to stimulate a sense of detachment in them. And lastly, to ensure the efficacy of worship and encourage manasalambana, mental disciplines. All these mantras are representations of consciousness, unrestricted in range and in achievement of purpose. These mantras should be regarded as pure embodiments of myself and hence of Lord Sharngin, Vishnu. They protect the adepts who meditate on them. According to the Shastra, their formulas are secret. They promote worldly enjoyment and at the same time lead to liberation. The four padas, Jagrat, Svapna, Sushupti and Turiya, lie on the route followed by the course of the mantras. In the state of Jagrat, waking, the senses register external objects. When the senses operating on external objects become fogged by darkness, sleep, and lose their power, the inner organ starts functioning by registering mere sanskara, impressions. This is the state of Swapna, dream. When even that does not function, the state of Sushupti, deep sleep, occurs. When a wise person whose mind is not fogged by the darkness of ignorance and whose being is wholly saturated with sattva, has completely stilled the functioning of Bahyantakarana, both his senses and mind, he enters the state of prasada, pure sattva's tranquility, and is then said to be in the state of turiya. This is a definition of the four footsteps called pada. It should be realized that all these states, excepting turiya, form part of the impure course of creation. The so-called bhuvanadvan, course of the world, begins with maya and terminates with kshiti, dissolution of the world. The course of bhuvana is impure and soiled by filth. During it, the mantras for fulfillment of worldly desire always make the passionate man sport in this world. He is enticed by the lure of the spell cast by various forms of pleasure. Then, by resorting to a preceptor who discreetly casts a compassionate eye on his disciple, these same mantras rescue him by awakening a sense of detachment in him during his progress along Pada, from Jagrat to Turiya. From there, the mantras gradually lead him to the way of purity and make him a master in the science of Shabda Brahman, thus finally guiding him to the realm of Absolute Shri. The mantras do indeed have a powerfully purifying effect in themselves. The mantras are of three types, inferior, intermediary, and superior, those mantras which are associated with the concrete forms of gods instrumental in producing phenomenal existence, and that envisage a given result as their objective, are regarded by the wise as belonging to the inferior type. Mantras that are related to Vibhava manifestations of God and their Shaktis belong to the intermediary type whilst the superior mantras relate to the vyuhas. Mantras that envisage complete absorption in the Supreme Brahman, whose nature is identical with Lakshmi Narayan, and which do not differentiate between the state of becoming and the state of existence, are, finally, 
the supreme mantras. The relative significance of mantras should be thus graded by the wise. The mantras of superior type fall solely within the Pancharatra system. The intermediary type pervades the Vedas. Whilst from the standpoint of sacred scripture, mantras belonging to other tantras are of inferior type. Mantras whose angas, auxiliary elements or limbs, are the kalas, jnana, etc., are to be regarded as superior. Those that have other angas are intermediary, while mantras without angas are inferior. Once more listen to me, O Indra. Mantras with both bija and pinda are called superior. Those possessing either a bija or a pinda are called intermediary, but those with neither a bija nor a pinda are called inferior. The preceptor, familiar with the various types of mantras and whose eyes are the shastras, should at the disciple's request adapt his instruction to the latter's requirements.